What's up, y'all? My name is Juwan. Coming back at y'all with another video. And today, I'm going to be telling you guys everything you need to know about curly hair. Now, all of our hair is different. It requires different things to get the most out of our curl. This video right here will help you guys make your own curly hair routines based on what your hair needs. So y'all can leave me alone because these questions are, it's too many questions, okay? So if that sounds exciting to you, I'm gonna need y'all to destroy that like button, okay? Just help a brother out. Like, you know I'm good for it. We basically grew up on the same block on phone them. Like, stop playing with me. But anyways, today I'm gonna be talking about curl patterns, hair porosity, hair density, and hair width. All right, so first up, curl patterns. If you've been following me, you'll know that I don't really like talking about hair typing. <laughs> Why might you ask? Because I don't like it, it's stupid. Nah, but for real, it's just really not that important as people think it is. And a lot of y'all, I mean a lot of y'all, think it's really important. Like I kid you not, what is your hair type is one of my most asked questions on all social media platforms. I'm sick of it. Now if y'all just think about it, if these hair typing charts were so legit, it would be no reason for y'all to ask me what my hair type is, now would it? You will be able to look at the chart, then look at my hair in its wet or dry state and know exactly what my hair type is. Preach! Now, I'm not gonna completely discredit hair typing. There are a few things you can learn about knowing your hair type, which I'll go over in a minute. But overall, all these charts would do is give you a realistic representation of how your hair will look after a style. That's it. And that's why I believe that knowing your hair type isn't as important as knowing your porosity, density, and width of your hair. Because knowing your curl pattern doesn't tell you the proper products to use, how much protein you need. It doesn't even tell you how much manipulation your hair can handle. All right, so now since we got all that out the way, there are four hair types. Type one is straight hair or <coughs> Caucasian people hair. Type one hair reflects the most sheen, is hard to damage, and pretty much impossible to curl. Type two hair is wavy hair. Type two hair is prone to frizz, but it's typically not overly oily or too dry. Type three hair is the actual curly hair. Type three hair is very climate dependent and damage prone. Type four hair, which is yours truly, is kinky coily hair. Type four hair is extremely wiry and fragile, which is insane because most people would think that since type four hair is the thickest hair there is, that it's the strongest of all the hair types, but it's actually very fragile and can break very easily if not taken care of properly. To find out how to properly take care of your hair, you already know your boy got you. Go watch my hair growth video. The link is gonna be above. Next, we're gonna talk about what I believe is one of the most important things to understand about your hair, which is your hair porosity. Hair porosity is how well your hair is able to absorb and hold moisture. For most, porosity is genetic, but don't think for two seconds that your hair cannot change porosity because it can. It can be affected by external factors such as chemical and heat damage. There are three levels of porosity, low, medium, and high, which is all affected by the cuticle. Bruh, did you just call me cute? Nah, bro, I said cuticle. Yeah, bro, I think he just called you cute. Bruh, chill. Nah, bro, I didn't. Say no homo, bruh. Like I was saying, your hair porosity is affected by the cuticle, which is the outer hair layer. And your hair porosity is important because it tells you how to layer your product. Low porosity is super stubborn. The cuticle is tight, which makes it kind of resistant to receive moisture and water. But once it's in there, it's gonna stay for a good little minute. I promise you that. I have low porosity and yes, it is super stubborn. Oh, but trust and believe your boy got ways of getting my hair to absorb moisture. <laughs> People with low porosity are gonna to wanna to do the LCO method since your main focus is getting moisture. So basically moisture, moisture seal. Normal porosity requires the least amount of maintenance. The cuticle is looser than low porosity, which allows just the right of moisture to get into the hair while preventing too much from escaping. Normal porosity is like the perfect balance and is known to hold styles very well. Right, get out of here smiling and cheesing cause you got normal porosity. Like it must be nice, huh? Sick of it. People with high porosity hair, Y'all got it rough, okay? I'm not gonna cap. High porosity hair has these big old gaps and holes in the cuticle, which lets in too much moisture and easily allows that moisture to come straight out. Because of this, high porosity hair is very prone to frizz and tangling. For people with high porosity, you wanna focus on sealing in that moisture so the LOC method will work well for you, which is liquid or leave-in, oil, and cream. So basically, moisture seal moisture. You're locking in that first moisture, then adding a thicker moisture, just in case that first moisture tries to slide up out of there, you feel me? Now there are two ways to find your hair porosity. The first way is to take a strand of hair. It'll be best for you to take one out of your detangling tool. Just take the strand and put it in a clear cup of water and just let it sit there for 10 to 15 minutes. If your hair just floats on the top, then you have low porosity. If your hair sinks to the bottom, then you have high porosity. And if your hair just stays in the middle, then you have normal 
porosity. The second way is to grab one strand of hair and slide it up and down the hair shaft. If you feel little bumps along the way, then that means you might have high porosity. If your finger slips smoothly along the hair shaft, that means you have low porosity. All right, next we have hair density. Hair density is the amount of strands on your head or how close strands are packed together. It is important to know your hair density because it tells you what types of products to use and how to best style your hair. There are three levels of density, low density or thin hair, medium density, and high density or thick hair. Low density, of course, has the least amount of volume. So you're gonna wanna avoid using heavy products that weigh your hair down. Also, don't go overboard when applying products that can also weigh your hair down and promote buildup. A very good styling product for this density is mousse because it'll enhance your volume, give you hold, and condition your hair all without weighing your hair down or creating unnecessary frizz. As for methods to use a pick is gonna be your ride or die your home dog your shooter okay you're gonna want to pick your roots and stretch your hair as much as possible when doing a twist out or braid out work in smaller sections to create the illusion of thicker hair because you can separate more and get a fuller look with medium density hair you pretty much have the best of both worlds your hair works well with a wide range of products you can enhance your volume by using light leave-ins and sprays or you can reduce your volume with thicker products like butters and cream you could basically achieve a variety of styles with this density. With high density hair, it's good to apply a lot of product because your hair is just so full and thick. You can use thicker, heavier products such as butters, creams, and gels to clump your curls together and reduce frizz. Or you can just embrace your volume with full body style. To find out your hair density, look at your hair in its dry, natural state without moving or manipulating your hair. If you can clearly see your scalp, you have low density hair. If you can see some of your scalp, you have medium density hair. And if your scalp is difficult or impossible to see, then you have high density here. All right, next up is hair width. Hair width is the width of your hair. I don't know what y'all expect me to say, but um, yeah. Or you can say how thick or thin a single hair strand is. It is important to know your hair width because it determines how strong your hair is. And if my hair is anything like me, then <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Hair width also tells you how much manipulation your hair can handle and if your hair is more prone to damage. Knowing this stuff will overall help you retain length and get longer hair. When it comes to hair width, there are three levels, fine, medium, and coarse. Fine hair is very small in circumference and very delicate and easy to damage. AKA, that thing weak, bruh. As a result, it's often difficult to maintain length with fine hair. Also, liquidy products work best with fine strand hair. Medium width hair consists of strands that are strong and elastic. They're neither too thick or too thin. Coarse hair is very wide in circumference and reminds me of myself because it's the strongest of all the hair textures. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's super easy to maintain length since it's more resistant to damage. To find your hair width, take a piece of your hair from a brush or a comb and hold it to the light. If your hair is very wide and easily visible, then you have coarse hair. If it's so thin that you can hardly see it, then you have thin hair. If your hair appears neither thin nor coarse, then you have medium width hair. Okay, now that was a lot of information, but let's just bring this all together. As for me, some of you guys might be wondering what my hair is. Well, I have type four hair, low porosity, medium strands, and thick hair. Now, with all that being said, there's no end all be all to natural hair. All of this stuff is scientifically based, but in reality, it doesn't always play out that way. This info is just meant to help put you on the right track of creating the best routine for your hair. This is a journey, okay? So you're still gonna have to experiment with different products and techniques to truly find what works best for you. Because for some of you who go through this, you might find that some of your stuff contradicts with one another. For example, let's say we have a guy, right? He has type four hair, low porosity, thick hair with fine strands. Having fine strands and thick hair kind of contradicts each other because thick hair is saying to use those heavier products, but at the same time, having fine strands is best to use light liquidy based products. So again, this is just meant to help lead you in the right direction and help you understand more about your hair so you can make better educated guesses to what to do with your hair. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the end, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Peace.